Did you know that 25% of Gen Zers say they're gonna need to see a therapist to deal with taxes? And before you even try to make fun of Gen Zers, taxes are very complicated in this country, no matter your age. Do you ever wonder what tax form you're gonna need to report your retirement earnings, real estate transactions, or even maybe the lottery winning to the IRS? I'm gonna go over some of the most common 1099s you get in the mail as well as the ones that are not as common like winning the lottery. And I want you to bookmark this video because you never know when you might need to watch it again. When the next tax season comes, you don't want to forget to file your 1099s with your CPA or a tax software company that rhymes with Virgo Lax or H&R Lock, or you're gonna end up paying interest and penalties to the IRS. And as a financial coach, I'll be the one to say this, some of these taxes our government takes is just absolutely unnecessary. Did you win the lottery? 50% of that, or maybe 60% goes to the IRS. Did you claim unemployment? Well, 10% of that is going to the IRS. Social security? Yep, they tax that too. Let's get into it. So let's first go over some of the most common ones you get almost every single year. And if you have a checking account or savings account, you're going to get what's called a 1099 INT, which stands for interest or your interest income. So if you earn at least $10 in interest from your high yield savings account, the bank is going to send you a 1099 INT by January 31st to let you know that's how much you made. Your interest income is taxed as federal income tax. So if you earn a hundred bucks in interest income, and your marginal tax rate is at 22%, then you're gonna owe $22 in interest income to the IRS. And if you use Venmo, Cash App, or PayPal to receive income for goods and services, you're gonna get a 1099K, like the passive aggressive reply in a text message with a K. Which one do you think is more disrespectful? A reply with a K or no replies at all? Just keep in mind that the minimum reporting threshold is $600, starting in the year 2024. It does not apply to friends and family money transfers unless you want your friends to pay extra taxes for some odd reason. But if you sold any tickets to see Taylor Swift in a concert or a football game at the Elysian Stadium to watch Taylor Swift show up to the Chiefs game, you're going to get a 1099k if your ticket sales exceed $600. And the other common one you're going to get is the 1099 div, which stands for dividends. You're going to get this from your taxable brokerage account or a non-retirement account. You're not going to get a 1099 div or DIV from your retirement accounts like the 401k, IRAs, TSP, or HSA, because those accounts are growing your dividends tax-free or tax-deferred. The two things I want you to really pay attention to are box 1A and 1B. 1A is the total ordinary dividends you receive in the tax year, and that's going to fall under the federal income tax. Box 1B is qualified dividends, which is taxed at 0, 15, or 20%. Most of you watching this video will be taxed at 0 or 15%. If you own any REITs or receive dividends less than the required holding period, you're going to be taxed as short-term capital gains or the ordinary income tax rate. If you have qualified dividends you receive from holding your investments for the long term, then you're going to have the dollar amount in box 1B. I encourage you to check out the full tutorial about dividend investing on my YouTube channel. And another 1099 you're going to get from the taxable brokerage account is the 1099B. Typically, if you sell any investments like mutual funds, ETFs, or individual stocks, you're going to receive a form 1099B from your broker to show your cost basis, capital gains, or capital losses. This is where you're gonna find out how much losses you can deduct from your federal income tax if you did any tax loss harvesting. The cost basis is how much you pay for the investment. It's gonna tell you how much you gained or lost short-term and long-term. Short-term capital gains will be an investment you held for less than a year and taxed as ordinary income tax or federal income tax. Long-term capital gains will be an investment you held for at least a year and taxed at 0, 15, or 20%. The broker is required to send you the 1099B and 1099DIV no later than February 15. And keep in mind that even if you don't sell any of your investments this year, but own mutual funds or ETFs, you could get a 1099B if the fund manager did any transactions within the mutual fund or ETF. And if you're someone who does any backdoor Roth IRAs and you're gonna get a 1099R from your broker, and I get a 1099R every year, but the backdoor conversion I made to my Roth IRA 
is not taxable because the money I contributed was in after-tax dollars, also known as non-deductible contributions. But if you're someone who's retired and living on your 401k, TSP, traditional IRA, or other pre-tax retirement accounts, you're going to get a 1099-R from your broker for making taxable distributions. You're going to owe federal income and state income taxes in some states if you make any pre-tax distributions. If you're ever confused about the backdoor Roth IRA process, I encourage you to schedule your first session with me by visiting firesuchet.com slash coaching. The other one you might see is the 1099S if you sell a real estate property with a profit. It could also be a piece of land, a building, or a condo. If you sold a primary home that you lived in as a single individual for at least two out of five years, the first $250,000 of that profit is not taxable. If you're married and filing your taxes jointly, only one of the spouses needs to live in the primary home for at least two out of five years. And the first $500,000 of the profit is not taxable. On the other hand, if you're selling your investment property without doing the 1031 exchange, you're going to get a 1099S to report your short-term capital gains if you've owned it for less than a year or long-term capital gains if you've owned it for more than a year. And another common 1099 is if you made any distributions from your HSA or health savings account or your MSA or Medicare Advantage accounts, if you make any distributions for qualified medical expenses from your HSA, you're going to get a 1099 SA from your HSA broker. You can think of SA as special agent. <gasps> If you also inherited an HSA because of the death of your spouse, you're going to have to report your HSA income under the fair market value of their account at the time of your spouse's death. So if you have an HSA like me, I encourage you to read about the 1099 SA, especially after you turn 65 years old, if you plan to use it as a retirement account. Now, let me discuss more 1099s that are less common, but may still happen to you, like winning the lottery or hitting the jackpot at the casino. I live in Las Vegas, so seeing people get a form W2G for gambling winning is pretty common here, unless you're terrible at playing blackjack. Let's say you won $100 million from the lottery and you decided to take a lump sum payment you could get a W2G or a 1099 MISC or miscellaneous to report your income. The marginal tax rate for $100 million is obviously going to be at 37%, but that's not accounting for the state income tax. It's going to be listed on one of the form W2G and say $100 million. The rest of the information is pretty self-explanatory, like the date you won, how much federal income tax was withheld, because lottery organizations typically will have to withhold at least 24% of your winnings your social security number, and how much state and local income taxes you withheld. And as sad as you may feel, about 50 to 55% of your major lottery winning will have to be set aside for federal and state income taxes. I made a detailed video about what to do when you win the lottery, and that video got over a million views, so be sure to check it out when you get a chance. You can also download my free financial resources by visiting firesuchet.com resources. And if your student loan was forgiven recently, you're going to get a Form 1099-C from the lender. The amount of your student loan that was forgiven will be considered taxable income. So if your $100,000 in student loans was forgiven by the federal government, then you're responsible to pay the income tax on the $100,000. So if that $100,000 is added to your W-2 income, you could be in the 22, 24, or even 32% in marginal tax rates. That's $22,000, $24,000, or $32,000, or something higher in total taxes owed, so please keep that in mind. And the rest of the 1099s are not as common, but you should know about them anyway. A 1099-G is when you receive unemployment compensation. Remember G as G unit. Just kidding. That was a terrible joke. I'm sorry. A 1099-G is when you receive unemployment compensation, state or local income tax refunds or credits, and any taxable grants your unemployment is considered taxable income. It's done. If you're a 1099 contractor who made $5,000 from goods and services you provided, you're going to get a Form 1099 NEC from the business you did the work for. For example, if I paid a web designer $5,000 in a year, I'm going to send a 1099 NEC to the web designer, and that web designer will have to report the $5,000 income tax to the IRS. And if at any time you used a qualified tuition program or the 529 college savings plan, you're going to receive a 1099-Q from the broker that manages your 529 plan. If you use your 529 for qualified educational expenses, 
you're not going to owe any taxes on it. But if you use it for something else other than education, you're going to pay the 10% penalty plus the federal income tax. And if you sold any cryptocurrency this year, you're going to get a 1099 MISC, which stands for miscellaneous, to report your crypto earnings. So if you own any crypto in a centralized exchange like Coinbase, they should send you a 1099 MISC or MISC if your profit exceeds $600 or more. I also get a 1099 MISC for royalty income from YouTube, TikTok, and Meta when I earn at least $600. This form is pretty much used for any type of miscellaneous compensation, such as prizes, awards, royalties, and healthcare payments. And I'm sure there are many more 1099s I didn't get to cover, but they're just not as common. But just because you didn't receive a 1099, it doesn't mean that you don't have to report that income to the IRS. There are many people who end up owing extra taxes, penalties, and interest because they didn't report their taxable income correctly. If they're wondering, why the government takes so much from you? Well, they just simply spend too much money, but that's a topic for another day. The tax deadline is upon you. Get with your CPA, Virgo Lax, or H&R Lock to get your tax filings correct. And this has been another beast of a video, and I hope you got a lot out of it.